Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Mesa Augustin. In this lesson, we're looking at laws of exponents. And in the first lesson, these are the laws that we looked at. So if you have not watched the first video, kindly check uh, that video from the description. Now let's start with this. You first start with radicals and then move downwards in a very simple way. Okay, if I write square roots of say A, what does it mean? This means that what number will multiply itself to give me A? That is the meaning of the square root. So let me take this number. A power half times A power half. In fact, let me write it very big. A power half times A power half. Now, from a power m times a power n equals a power m plus n. Then this can be written as a power half plus half. That will give me a power half plus half is 1. So which will eventually give me a. Wow. It means that if I multiply a power half, by itself, it will give me a. So the square root of a is equal to a power half in a very simple way. What about writing this? The cube root of a. This means that what number or what variable will multiply itself three times to give me a. So let's see how we do that one. Let me take a power one out of three times a power one out of three times a power one out of three. This will give me a power one out of three plus one out of three plus one out of three, which is equal to a power three out of three, which is equal to a power one, which eventually gives A. Wow. Which will eventually give me what? A. What is here? It means that the cube root of A is A power 1 out of 3. Meaning that A power 1 out of 3 will multiply itself 3 times to give me the A here. So we can state that if I have the square root of, sorry, the nth root of a, then it is equal to a power 1 out of n in a very simple way. Wow. So if here is 3, we get a power 1 out of 3. If n is 4, we get a power 1 out of 4. If n is 5, we get a power 1 out of 5. And it goes on like that. It is only the square root that we don't put 2 here. No, don't put a 2 here. This is what we call square roots in a very simple way. Wow. So, we've shown that if we have a radical, we can just write it as a fractional exponent in a very simple way. So, if I have the cube root of 27, this can simply be written as 27 power 1 out of 3. Wow. Which can be written as 27 is 3 power 3. And then you have another power, 1 out of 3. Then from A power N power M, which gives A power N times M, you multiply 3 by 1 out of 3 to get. 1. So we have 3 power 1. This. This will multiply this. It will give you 1. You can use your calculator to check. So we have 3 exponent 1, which is eventually 3. In a very simple way. Wow. What about if I have this? If I have the four fruits. Let me look at this. The four fruits of 27. 
what will this be? You know that this is simply 3 power 3. That is the 27. And the fourth root is power 1 out of 4. So this is the same as 3 power 3 times 1 out of 4, which gives us 3 power 3 out of 4. Wow. So this gives us a very nice property of the exponents. That is, we can state that if I have a power n divided by m, then I just write it as a power m, sorry, a power n, a power n, power 1 out of m. Wow, that is very nice. Which eventually gives the nth root of a power n in a very simple way. Good. Now, let us explore more under this. So, if I have, say, 81. The third root of 81. Wow. Here, 81 is simply 3 exponent 4. So this is 3 exponent 4. Power 1 out of 3. So this will give us 3 exponent. 4 times 1 out of 3 is 4 out of 3. So if I have 3 power 4 out of 3, and I want to send it back here, this is simply 3 power 4 power 1 out of 3, which eventually gives the cube root of 3 power 4, and this will be the cube root of 81 in a very simple way. So don't think of sending it forward. You can think of sending it backward in a very simple way. So that is what we have there. Now, we can also do it in this way. You see that we have three exponent four, exponent one out of three. So we can interchange the powers since we multiply. So we can write it as three power one out of three power four. This one is also possible, which will give us the cube root of three power four. And this is the cube root of 3, then you bring the 4 here. And this will give us the cube root of 81, the same way. Wow, depending on how fast you want to go. Okay, so we've also seen that property. Now, what about this? If I have um, let's say 27 exponent negative. Okay, let's do it like this. 1 divided by the fourth root of the cube root one of 8. <clears throat> let's see this one. This is the same as 1 divided by The cube root of 8 is what? Is 8. Sorry, this is 2 power 3. And the cube is 1 out of 3. So this will give us 1 divided by 2. 3 times 1 out of 3 will give us this. And in the first lesson, we said that if you have 1 divided by a, it is equal to a power negative 1. So this will eventually give us 2 exponent negative 1 in a very simple way. Now let us check some property relating to this. Look at this. If I have 1 divided by, let's say square root of a, then this is the same as 1 divided by a power 1 out of 2. 
because square root means our half. And from here, we can write 1 divided by a power negative 2 as, no, not from here, from 1 on a power n, because a power negative n. We can write this one as a power negative 1 out of 2 in a very simple way. Wow. Let's check some tricky ones here and see. So, how do I write this? If I have three exponents, negative three out of four, this will be the same as one divided by three exponents, three out of four, in a very simple way. So here I have one divided by, this is three out of four. So this will be the fourth root of three power three. But if we want to go step by step, we can write this one as 3 power 3 power 1 out of 4, which will give us 1 divided by 27, and 1 out of 4 becomes the fourth root in a very simple way. Wow. Now, let us send this one backwards. Let's send this one backwards. If I have 1 divided by the fourth root of um, 16, right? No, 8. I want to send it backwards to get uh, this formula. Okay. Then I'm going to have this. 1 divided by 2 exponent 3, exponent 1 out of 4, which will give me 1 divided by 2 exponent 3 on 4, which will give me Two as well negative three on four. So we can state categorically that if a is raised to the power negative n on m, then we have one divided by the m root of a power n in a very simple way. So let's check this. If I have three as well negative. 1 out of 2, then this will give me 1 divided by square root of 3 in a very simple way. Because we don't put the 2 here. If I have, let's say, 3 as well negative 2 on 5, then I'm going to have 1 divided by the fifth root of 3 power 2, which gives 1 divided by the fifth root of 9. Uh, these are ones are very good for um, differentiation. When you reach differentiation, uh, these are very, very good. Uh, it helps you in dealing with differentiation. Well, these are variables. Okay, so let me pick one variable. Okay, I've done that one, so there's no need. Okay, let me do one variable. Let's say that I have um, x power minus 4 out of 3. So this will give me 1 divided by the cube root of x power 4. So if I have 1 divided by the cube root of x power 4, I can change it to this place in a very simple way. Now, I hope you've done a lot with the radicals, right? So let us um, turn to division and see. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. Yes, it is um, amazing. So let us um, like and then move on. Okay, let's see this one. If I have this, look at this. If I have 3 divided by 2 times 3 divided by 2 times 3 divided by 2 times 3 divided by 2, then here you say that 3 divided by 2 is multiplying itself 4 times. So you write 3 divided by 2 power 3. Wow. In a very simple way. Now, if we want to use the multiplication law, then this will give us 3 exponent 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. Divided by 
two exponents, one plus, one plus, one plus, one. One, two, three, four. Which will give us, oh sorry, this is power four, right? Now. Which will give us three exponent four divided by two exponent four. So what have we done? You've seen that three on two. Multiplying itself four times is three on two power four. It's the same thing as three power four, two power four. So we said that this is equal to three power four divided by two power four. Wow. I hope you are enjoying it. And it's quite amazing. So we can say that if I have A on B divided by, sorry, always the power N, then I have A power N divided by B power N in a very simple way. So for instance, if I have three on two power four, this gives three power four divided by two power four, which is 81 divided by 16. Okay, now let's see this one. If I have 16 out of 81, this can also be written as 2 power 4 divided by 3 power 4, which is 2 divided by 4, sorry, 2 divided by 3 power 4. So don't think of raising this to the power, you can also think of factorizing the power out. So power four, power four. So you factor the power out in a very simple way. Good. Okay, let's take um, 27 out of eight. 27 is three power three. And then eight is two power three. So this can be written as three divided by two, all power three in a very simple way. So that is good. Let's see. So in the same vein, if I have, say, two exponent x divided by three exponent x, then it is two divided by three exponent x, because x is common. The power here is common. Wow. In a very simple way. Then if I have two power, 3x divided by 5 power 2x. This can be written as 2 power 3 power x divided by 5 power 2 power x. And we are good to go, right? Yes. Because you can write this. This will give me 8 divided by 25. Then all power x. Because we have x common to the power, so we can factorize it out. Wow. I hope this uh, is um, breaking down things for you. And um, that is really what I wanted to do. That's why I'm making this video for you. Okay. Now, let's see this one. Huh? Let's see this one. If I have this, 3 on 2, all squared. Let's say all key times three on two. All key. You see that this will give me three on two. All key. Power two. Wow. The power two here means that three on two, all key is multiplying itself two times. Now, if I use the loss of exponent, that is multiplication, then 3 on 2, all keep times 3 on 2, all keep will give me 3 on 2, power 3 plus 3, which will give me 3 on 2, power 6. So you see that 3 times 2 will also give me power 6. So you can state that if we have a divided by b, where b has a power of let's say m and a has a power of let's say k, and the whole of them has a power of uh, n, 
Then this can be written as a power k times n, that is kn, divided by m times n, that is b power mn, in a very simple way. Wow. So, let's see this. If I have 3 power 2 divided by 4 power, um, okay, let's make it 2. 2 power, let's say 3, all power 2. Then I'm going to have 3 exponent 2 times 2 divided by 2 exponent 3 times 2, which will give me 3 power 4 divided by 2 power 6, which is the same as 81 divided by 64. That is in a very simple way. Wow. Now, what about this? I think this will be the last one. If I have this, let's take this one, right? If I have A on B, power negative 1, then from A on B, power M, because A power M divided by B power M, we can simply write this one as a power negative 1 divided by b power negative 1, which will eventually be 1 divided by a. Then this division sign can be here, 1 divided by b. Or we can write it as 1 divided by a divided by 1 divided by b. Anyway, now. This simply becomes 1 divided by a times b divided by 1, which gives b divided by a. Or if we proceed this way, 1 divided by a times b divided by 1, which gives b divided by a. A very nice approach. Okay, so we state that if we have a on b all to the power negative, we just turn it upside down and the power becomes positive. So, if I have this, if I have 3 divided by 2, this is the same as 2 divided by 3, with a negative power. Don't think of bringing this one here, we can also send this one here. Wow, so if I have 2 on 3, power negative x, is the same as, wow, we've not reached here. But once I've written it, let us do it. I think that will be the last one. But let's do it in addition to this. This is negative x. No, let me put it there. I'll come back to it. If I have, let's say, 5 out of 3 power negative 1. So this will give me 3 out of 5. Then the power becomes positive. What about this one? If I have... 2 on 3 power negative x. Then this is the same as 3 on 2. Then the power becomes positive x in a very simple way. Because here the power became positive 1. Right? But positive 1 is 1. That is why we write a b out of a. So here to the power become positive x. In a very simple way. So the inner one will turn upside down. Wow. Now, let's see. So let us write this. Say, if I have A on B, power negative N, then it is B on A, power positive N. And if we have A on B, power negative N on M, then it becomes B on A, power positive N on M. We just turn the inner one upside down and forget about the sign. Don't turn this one to upside down. Don't turn this one upside down in a very simple way. Wow. So, let's see if this is true. Because somebody may also turn N on M upside down. So this will give me A power negative N on M divided by b power negative n on m. 
which is eventually 1 divided by a power negative positive n on m. This is the division sign. Divided by 1 divided by b power positive n on m, which is 1 on a power n on m times b power n on m divided by 1. Wow. So, what do we do? We proceed this way. So, this will give us b power n on m divided by a power n on m, which is equal to b power n, sorry, b divided by a, all power n on m. So, do not turn the power upside down. It is the base that we turn upside down and forget about the negative sign in a very simple way. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson, but I nearly forget this. What is a power zero? Wow. A power zero is simply what? Why are you saying a power zero is one? The reason being very simple. A power zero, let's take a divided by a. Now from a power m divided by a power n equals a power m minus n, then we have a power one minus one, which gives a power zero. Wow, so from basic arithmetic, a divided by a is equal to one in a very simple way. So a power zero is also equal to one. So we said that if I have, let's say um, two power zero, two power zero is simply two divided by two, which is one. So if I have x plus one, power zero is the same as x plus one divided by x plus one, which is zero. In a very simple way. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please give me a like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments.